Welcome to the Halloween edition of Because Miata. Today we are taking care of some much needed maintenance. So today we're going to be changing the coolant and flushing the engine. Now the reason this is important is especially if you bought this car second hand you really don't know unless you knew the previous owner how often or what type of coolant they used there's a couple different types and i'm going to try to explain what i know about it and uh, show you the proper way of flushing the engine just to get all the old coolant out so what we're going to do today is jack up the car drain the old fluid out of the radiator flush out the system add new coolant and be on our way now Mazda recommends that you do this every two to three years or every 30,000 miles. I've gone way over 30,000 miles. Another reason why it's important to flush out the system is unless you were the original owner of this car, you don't really know what they've put into the radiator as far as the type of coolant or how often they've changed it if there's any rust deposits, sludge from, you know, Dex Cool, what have you, you never know. So it's always a good idea, especially if you get a new car to you, uh, flush out the radiator with, you know, a, a coolant flush, and then put in whatever you want, and I'll go over what's best for this car. First thing we're gonna do is jack up the car and drain the old coolant out of the radiator. I'm going to show you where you drain the coolant. Under here, if you've got this plastic shroud, if you don't, you'll see it right away, but if you've got this plastic uh, cover here, look in this hole, and right there, that big Phillips screw right there, that is your drain plug for your radiator. Make sure you have a couple of buckets handy because you're going to need quite a bit to catch all the old fluid. Always work on draining fluids when the engine is cool, not when it is hot. So what I'm going to do first is actually leave the cap on and unscrew the, the plug first. Then I'm going to take the cap off and it'll just drain out quickly. If I take the cap off now, it's going to pour out really hard and could splash all over my hand or everywhere else. So let's see if we can uh, get this mess free here. Now I'm going to undo the top and we'll see it pour out even quicker. There you go. <laughs> so while that's draining out, let me go ahead and talk to you about the coolant that I chose to use for this project. So for coolant, there's a couple different kinds to, to look at when you're trying to pick a coolant for your car. Um, the one that Mazda recommends is an ethylene glycol, which is basically your old school coolant. I'll even show you right here on the engine. If you go to your radiator overflow, there's a label on mine here. Uh, maybe yours is still there maybe it's worn off of due to age but this is what it came with from the factory uh, basically it says right there ethylene glycol antifreeze is what you need to use for this car 
there's a couple different types to choose from. The main difference between all the different types of coolants is the additives that they put in. Uh, mostly they're silicates or phosphates. The silicates, from what I understand, are good for European cars, some American cars, um, because they help lubricate the water pump and clean out the system. Um, but for our cars, the Mazdas and other Japanese cars, those can sometimes be a little harsh on the water pump and can cause pitting on the impeller. So they actually make a silicate free type of coolant made for Asian cars. That's what I personally use on these and would recommend to you as well. I'll take, I'll, let me show you what I got. So I went with the Pentafrost A2. This is formulated for Asian vehicles using the green antifreeze. If you looked, I've got green antifreeze. This is what you need to look for with your car as well. And you see here, Mazda, 90 and up, perfect for Miatas. Now I'll be honest, this one is a little bit more expensive than your typical peak type of antifreeze that you would buy over the counter. Uh, but I truly believe that you get what you pay for with this stuff. They do have uh, Mazda's own brand of antifreeze that you can purchase, but it's literally like three times the cost. Um, this should do just as good. I picked this up at AutoZone. You can get it online as well. And it, you know, probably costs about 20 bucks as opposed to $10 for the other kind that you, the cheaper brands. Uh, they all kind of do the same thing, but this one will give you a little bit of peace of mind that it's not going to tear up your coolant system and uh, break your water pump. So if you really want to test the efficiency of the coolant that you already have in the car, you can get a coolant tester like this and suck it up in here. You'll see that this coolant isn't too bad it's actually doing its job if that red mark here uh, wasn't going all the way to the end and if it stayed down towards the bottom then your coolants not working efficiently and you definitely need to swap out your coolant since mine's not bad and this is actually pretty good coolant still what I'm going to do is just kind of do a flush through the top of the radiator instead of installing like a T to maybe flush out the the heater core and the, the engine block you mainly want to do that flush if um, Let's say you're, you're changing over from uh, a coolant that has Dex Cool in it. Dex Cool is the orange coolant, and it's actually a really good coolant, but it requires a lot more maintenance. Uh, it tends to separate over time and turn into sludge in your system, and that's, that's not a good thing to have. So another thing to note, if you drain your coolant and you see that you have that orange or a different color than what you're planning on putting in, you definitely need to flush out the system because you don't mix the different types of coolants. It can cause a chemical reaction that can cause problems within the system. So definitely flush your system. If you look at the heater hoses here, one of the main reasons I'm not gonna install a T this time is I believe this is your inlet hose for the heater that goes to the top of the engine. This is where you would really want to tee it off and there's just not a lot of room to work with here. What I may end up doing is flushing it out from here whenever I buy replacement hoses. So I can just put up the tee here, flush it out, get a good clean system, and then put the new hoses. Because to be honest, 
these hoses need to be changed every you know so often anyways I would say I don't know 100,000 miles or so just because on the inside they collect a lot of gunk too um, and the additives they you know they can cause pitting and stuff on the inside of these hoses as well so um, definitely a good idea to swap those out now the newer silicone hoses do last a bit longer and they hold up better under heat they're just generally better overall so one thing I can use to flush out the system is a chemical flush something like this uh, there's different kinds for different types of issues this one is more of a general kind of maintenance type of flush gets out rust and uh, you know any kind of deposits like that uh, they do make another one if you've drained your system and you find a lot of oil in your coolant which is never a good thing first thing you need to do is try to identify the source of where you're getting oil into your coolant system uh, but once you do that and you fix that they do make other types of coolant flushes that are specific for cleaning out oil throughout the tubing and pipes and the radiator Another cool gadget you can get for your project is a spill-proof funnel kit. This basically screws into the top of your radiator and allows the proper bleeding of the system to where you don't get a bunch of air bubbles in uh, introduced into your, your coolant system. So this is what the uh, funnel looks like installed. You just find the right size adapter uh, that fits your radiator and put the funnel on. And this will allow coolant and water or whatever you want to put in there without introducing any air bubbles into the system. All right, so I've already put the plug back into the bottom of the radiator to keep any uh, liquids from leaking out. What I'm going to do now is add the chemical flush and then add water. And I'm going to run in the engine for a while till it gets hot, open up the heater to let it circulate through the heater core and uh, also circulate through the top that will allow the thermostat to open up um, and it'll just kind of flush out the system then I'll drain it again and then uh, fill it up with 50-50 antifreeze. When you're flushing and also when you're mixing any coolant into your system, get distilled water. Don't use the purified water. The distilled water takes out any kind of mineral deposits that are in normal drinking water. Um, it's just better for your system overall. See how the funnel is basically burping itself here, allowing air to escape without introducing it into the system. Turn the engine on. I'm going to add a little bit more water and uh, then I'm going to turn on the heater to suck it into the heater core.
once you're inside the car, go ahead and turn the heat all the way up. I usually put the fan on all the way. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but uh, just turn the heater on. And we're waiting for the temperature to get up to normal operating temperatures. At that point, if you look right there, you can see the water line in the middle right there um, basically once once we get up to normal operating temperature the thermostat will open up and it will suck more of that water down into the system so that's what we're waiting for here operating uh, temperature so I imagine that thermostat's going to open any minute now and this will get sucked in and we'll basically let it run through for about 15 minutes and then flush it again and then add our coolant. So we're not quite at the middle there but you see we're getting really close. Be prepared to wait because you're going to grow old real fast waiting for this to heat up. Okay, I have completed running the flush through the system, so now I'm just going to drain it out through the bottom and then add my coolant and I will be done. So that is the flush being drained out. See, it still has a little bit of color to it, some greenish color. It's just cleaning out rust and other sediment from the radiator. Once that finishes draining, I'm gonna flush it out a little bit more with water just through the top of the radiator, and then I will seal it up in the bottom and then fill it up with 50-50 coolant and distilled water. We are now ready to mix in a 50-50 of antifreeze with distilled water here. Uh, contrary to popular belief, antifreeze does not cool engines better than water. Water is the best coolant you can put in your engine. The reason we put uh, antifreeze in here though is to keep it from freezing in the winter and keep it from boiling in the summer and also it's got additives to help keep it clean and try to keep uh, rust from building up in there. So this is just uh, kind of a thing to maintain your, your engine better. But back in the old days all they put was water. This was before antifreeze was developed. They just put water and they would just change it regularly. Uh, problem was is it started to form rust over time so that's why they came up with uh, additives like antifreeze. So. Just added the coolant and just letting it get sucked down into the system here. And we are about done. So that's all there is to it. We just flushed the radiator out of the old coolant and added new coolant with a 50-50 mixture. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I would recommend doing that if you just picked up your Miata for the first time and you don't know what's in there currently. Uh, you may want to do a more extensive flush than what I did today just to make sure all the other stuff is out of there. 
but uh, if your coolant is still pretty good or it looks to be the same color as the, the one you're adding, you know, just go ahead and flush out the radiator part with a hose and then just add new coolant to it. Anyways, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Happy Halloween.